Welcome back to Trends and Friends. We're joined today with Danica Shea Carranza, and we are talking about a serious topic today. It's really in light of a lot of the mass shootings that you've seen happen across the country, we want to talk about how um, or what strategies we should be using when we've got a difficult conversation to have with our kids. So Danica, thank you so much for being here. Yes, it's not you. always an easy topic to discuss with your kids, right? but you have some great strategies on where we should start. So where where do we begin to have that conversation? Yeah, um, I just have some nine steps that I you know, was thinking about. First, you have to start the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, and really you gotta let them lead that conversation. You know, maybe it's a difficult conversation about a mass shooting, but um, don't overshare, don't assume the kids have heard anything yet. Let them start talking. And you need to make sure to listen. So listen for those fears, those misconceptions. Okay. And so then the next step would be to just gently correct any inaccurate information they may have. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you want to go into just really encouraging a lot of questions and being willing to answer those directly. Um, so also with that you want to reassure them, you know, the likelihood of something like that happening to them, right. that they're safe, that's what, you know, we're here for parents and schools, we're here to keep them safe. Mm -hmm. um, also it's a good topic about good versus bad, the little ones, you know, good guys versus bad, and we just teach them that there's more good than bad in the world. Um, also. You also want to be careful to limit media exposure, especially with these mass shooting type situations. Yes. Yeah. Um, eight years and under, they really cannot differentiate between fantasy and reality, so we really okay. want to watch out for what they're watching, mm -hmm. especially teenagers and adults. We can get a lot of anxiety watching the news. It can be scary. Um, also, we want to consider some common reactions that they might have. Um, we might see some in increased anxiety, some defiant behavior, some irritability mm -hmm. in our teenagers. So just know that that might happen and be prepared for that. Also, just be a positive role model. You know, okay. um, if I can share yeah, and- that's a big one. Yeah, just share, not overshare, but hey, I'm scared and worried too. Mm -hmm. And just how can we help the victims? Maybe they wanna write them a letter or send money, but also modeling good coping skills. And then talk as often as necessary. You know, this okay. is probably just gonna be a one-time conversation, so be willing to keep that open conversation. Well, and I like the idea of, you know, letting them lead that conversation, but then sort of having a plan, yeah. you know, for, for where that conversation kinda ends, so mm -hmm. that you don't leave them scared and afraid, but yet knowing that, when these things do happen, there is a plan in place and you can be safe. And, and I think that's what you're getting at is the conversation absolutely is really hard, mm -hmm. but there's a way to kind of have a little bit of light at the end of that tunnel. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Very, very good. Well, thank you so much for thank being here. Thank you for here. having so me. So appreciate it. You're always so good with all of this information. Sometimes we, we make it a bit more than it has to be and you just made it really simple and oh, easy thank you. for us. So thank you for that. All right, coming up, we'll talk with Nancy Neal from Lubbock Parks and Recreation. Stay with us.